Now this is a perfect little air compressor that I picked up at the scrapyard yesterday. But it depends on what it'll be perfect for. If the crankshaft is offset by 90 degrees, then it would be perfect for a steam engine and not a Stirling engine. However, if the crank is parallel, and so it means that the pistons are offset by 90 degrees and not 180, then make a really good Stirling engine and maybe also a steam engine. There is a good amount of friction on here though, so I, I think a uh, Stirling engine will be a bit, a bit unrealistic. Only one way to find out. And if that one doesn't make a very good Stirling engine, I still have a few other ones that I might be able to hook together and make an easier to turn Stirling engine. That one is a bit hard. This one, these ones are a bit easier. Just need to find another one of those. When I got this at the scrapyard, it was full of water and it was really crunchy. I'm not sure if this was a refrigeration compressor or, I don't know, it wouldn't be because it has an open inlet. So yeah, this would just be an air compressor. Oh, sorry, loose. Well, never mind then. Yeah. Whatever happens, I doubt this will make a very good air compressor unless I want to replace all this. Let's do that one with it, because of the same paint, green paint. It's kind of funny how that road gets away from the scrapyard to my house stuck in there. So this one tops out right here. This one tops out right here. Oh, we might have ourselves a Sterling engine and then a steam engine later on. So this thing can be two different things. And I figure that's really cool. I was, I was afraid that the, judging by how offset these are, that there would be enough room in there for them to have a different like cam, you know, like a thing to change it. But I guess it might be a bit too complicated if they don't really have to. This is aluminium. No doubt it's probably stuck on there quite hard. Made in the United States of America. with the CHA I think but it's really something pneumatic machinery co serial number BV0017717 oil level you know this actually really made my day to find out that that's only 90 degree offset and not 180 degree it's a very 1970s color isn't it the 80s, I don't know, like mid late 70s to early 80s.
like that. It's kind of funny. I was going to go give it a bath, but I guess we won't. Just wait. Oh, there's nothing in there. Wow. There's the bearing in it. I see. Well, the bearing seems actually fairly nice. Not Ooh, bad. Sterling engine. Yep. I uh, just got it apart, and it is. It, it it's in the right configuration, so I can use it for a Sterling engine. So that's cool. I just took that out accidentally, and I was meaning to, but. Kind of crunchy. Crunchy motors. Yeah. Yeah. Although this is kind of stiff, so I'm thinking it probably won't actually make a very good sterling engine. I might have to turn to a steam engine later. Mm -hmm. Better be a sterling engine first. Mm. It looks like, it it's, looks like it's got a washer in between it. Yeah, but that could just be a, you know what? It is a washer. Can you put something in between it? Let's see if I can actually scrape it off. Yeah, you can. Ah, yep. It is a washer. Okay. So you can put something in between where the washer is, kind of yeah, keep the yeah. washer away, and then... I'm a bit impatient. I'm just kind of screwed it. Right you want something thinner than that? I don't have something thinner than that. That would, like, stay together, you know? Like a sliver of metal? I don't want to get it stuck in this. Be a wedge. And it's starting to eat it up. Oh, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good. They're not long enough to actually go into it, so it's good. It's sizzling pretty good.
worked. Look at charm. It's toasty. Now, honestly, I think some of the friction would be coming from the actual crank housing. There's an oil down there, and whenever I tighten it down too hard, I mean, it's very stiff. So it could just be that some of the issues aren't entirely with the piston to cylinder connection. See how that's offset by 90 degrees? I love that. It's a very good thing. And you can also hear the air going in and out of the crank housing. Uh, that would be, there's a little hole down here that has a pipe going up. So it'll be breathing in the air from above there. Regarding these top pieces, that's still hot. Holy shit. And that's hot too. I'm not touching those. Regarding these top parts that I most definitely mauled up with the screwdriver. You can definitely see it right there. I plan to get a piece of glass, a big piece of glass, and put some sandpaper on there. Very fine, fine sandpaper. And I'll take off these cylinders and if I use these I'll take those off and and then I will sand them down, or hone them, or lap them, whatever the term is. Make them all super flat, and um, on the, the sand, the fine sandpaper on the, the thick, like, flowed glass. And, um, yeah, now I have to think about how to actually do this, because I thought I would never find this motor. Um, or compressor, sorry. I've been looking for this for like over a decade and finally I found one. And you know what, when, when you find one, there's most likely more. So I'm going to pick up as many as I can. But that's the only one I saw there this time. If we can get that friction down, I think we can turn it into a Stirling engine. Because a Stirling engine will effectively be blocking off these valves and removing the other valves and then you have it like so with just a direct li direct line no valves just going between them seal up this part and stuff like that which might be a good idea just to build a new headpiece I'm not sure it's hard to tell Some nice size pistons too. And for the last part, the regenerator to make things more efficient. Last year I was rummaging around in a electronics recycling center in Silicon Valley and I found this. A part of, off of like some super fancy vacuum equipment. Probably cost more than my entire workshop. But on the inside is a bunch of like steel wool. But it's not it's like really, really shiny and it's around. So, you know, it's probably some like super valuable like rubidium catalyst or something like that. But I'm gonna use it as if it's steel wool and I'm gonna push the air through it. That's, hmm. Oh yeah, it has good airflow. So that will be the regenerator. So whenever the air goes from the cold side to the hot side, it'll cool this off to be the half way temperature and then whenever the air goes from the hot side to the cool side again it'll it'll cool off the air from the hot side basically I, i'm i'm not working well today this will help to equalize the temperature in the middle and that way whenever the hot air gets to the cold side it's between the two temperatures it's not the same temperature as the hot side and so it increases the efficiency quite a bit 
this is not um, this is a bit too long to go between them so we might have to have it sitting off to the side and have the the V cylinders and have them coming out in and out in I forgot it was this big but yeah that's uh, another option if that thing isn't efficient enough and then hopefully I would like to have that now, if it doesn't work as a Stirling engine, I want to power it off of solar power. And that can be where this project and my Solar Sunday series on my new channel can coincide. Because it's kind of fun. And also, I want to see about running that with an electric motor and seeing if we can freeze one side and heat up to the other, act as an actual heat pump. I've been busy cleaning up the yard. And I'm taking a break from projects like this, though. So I'm going to put that thing back together. And I'm going to store it in the workshop. Keep it dry. And I'm going to keep... I'm going to kind of like gather all the parts I need. Like, I'm going to find, like, the sandpaper that I want. And I'm going to do all that stuff. And um, then whenever I have the workshop in a better state and I have the yard cleaned up, like, you guys probably already noticed, I got that part of the patio out there cleaned up. That was a bunch of copper scrap that I cut up and sorted and have a nice head start on some stuff I can melt down for fun projects. I don't know. But either way, it's not a huge, it's not a huge pile of junk out there anymore. It's at least some cleaned off concrete. Oh my god, I just realized it does have the piece. I, I don't need to do really anything. I just need to stop up the valves, remove that valve, stop with that valve, remove that valve, find a cap for that, you know, take it apart and clean all the parts up so it's not so stiff. And we, it, it is a Stirling engine, oh my god, holy shit. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's even in front of your face. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick little inspection of whether or not this would be what I hope it would be, which it is. And thank you very much for watching. See ya!